Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the Bundesliga's review. Uh, this time we have something very special. For the first time I'm not doubling up any team. Every team is only featured once here because I added Casino Salzburg to stand in as an Austria for, uh, for uh, not Austria Salzburg for for Red Bull Salzburg. So very excited about that. Uh, the only thing that bothers me now is the Bremen shirt up here because Bremen currently is not in the Bundesliga. But news update: you will there is relief coming. There will be more jerseys that will make my uh, Austria Germany background a whole lot more flexible, and I'm very very excited about that but more on that later this week also later this week you'll get my first installment for the german bundesliga jersey review which will be now for the next two weeks you'll get uh, two each week uh everything already done and um uh, shipped by the time that you are watching this so i'm very excited about that one as well so a whole lot of stuff happening there also a very interesting weekend i gotta say uh in both leagues uh, the Austrian league, yeah, was a lot of draws and a not so happy result for me, um, although the performance overall was not that bad. And in Germany, we had a true statement of power by Bayern Munich and hence I'm wearing Bayern Munich in a round that, especially on Saturday, it seemed like, yeah, uh, we might get something really, really interesting. Could turn out to be an uh, interesting season, I think, after Sunday. I think few will doubt that Bayern will like, repeat as champions. They look like a true powerhouse team, uh, even in Europe, I think. The Nagelsmann method is getting there. But I want to start this review in Austria, where um, Red Bull Salzburg, I'm, I had it in mind to say Austria or <laughs> Casino Salzburg, because I'm so fixed on this shirt there, but Red Bull Salzburg. And yes, in case you didn't know, uh, the reason why I have this and not a Red Bull shirt is because Red Bull just took over the license, took over the team, said, okay, you have been purple for all these years. No, we're going to make you red and white. And we even don't recognize any of the history that you had, which is a true shame. They dropped points for the first time this season at Altach. I think they had a lead. Altach could equalize. So pretty uh, special there. Rapid also cannot get a win. Austria win also cannot get a win. All draws. Admira Vaca hanging in there. Yes, they lost to Lusk, but uh, they're having a really, really good season. Speaking of Lusk. <laughs> it was almost like I could have predicted. Wolfsburg, uh, playing Wolfsburg at home always ends up being with us wasting tons of chances. And Wolfsburg launching a counter and an Israeli striker scoring the winner. And that's exactly how it went. Within five minutes, Lusk could have been up by three good goals. They started out with great chances, even once hit the crossbar. I think I want to say even once the post and they had chances where they just cannot get it on the goal very well. It was pure dominance for the first 15 to 20, 20 minutes. Then the game kind of fizzled out and I even lost some interest and they had another chance uh, just before the halftime in the second half. And it was really, really weird. There was an offensive uh, move forward uh, where Horvath then loses the ball uh, to Tafana, who just punts it forward. But for some reason, Baribo finds himself running clear on goal. 1 0 Wolfsburg. And then they don't have the means to score, uh, or, you know, they see passes when they maybe could shoot, or they shoot when they should pass. You know, uh, going forward, Lask is just a mess. However, I think it was not the worst round to have a loss because everyone else, I mean, Tirol Hartberg, a draw, and Sturm even beating Reed uh, actually meant something that Sturm actually could move a little bit further, further. But, you know, after 11 rounds played, and for once I give you the current the current, the current and last only 10 points, you're very, very much behind the pace and making the playoff is anything but guaranteed. And I said, it's... Three, it's a three-tiered league. Salzburg, top tier, Sturm Graz behind, and then the rest. With a win, Wolfsburg with a win went from seventh to third. I mean, it tells you everything that's happening there. But let's move forward to, because um, everything else you will get in my stats cast. Let's move forward to what happened in Germany, um, where uh, for me the shocker in, in a way was Hoffenheim beating Köln 5 0. I just I only saw, saw the result, but I watched a little bit of the um, um, second half 
of the conference, which were all the uh, 330 games. Um, Dortmund Mainz, I mean, the first half was only 1 0 Dortmund, it should have been way more a uh, beautiful, wonderful strike by Reus in or, or in the third minute. Uh, that, that, that should have been ma many more goals. Then uh, Mainz is actually quite good make it a rather even but then um for most of the second half what swung the game definitely into Dortmund's favor was a penalty call where yeah this was a so and so uh the uh, defender i think it was bell no it was not no bell some uh, so, uh, so, someone else i mean you you can see he was to pull the arm and the ball the arm goes out and, and 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 so on but it was not really a voluntary movement but it was also a movement that increased the body so it, they turned around made it a penalty i think if you're a home team with a huge huge crowd you are very likely to get that one to be honest uh and yeah the coach svensson was not very happy i really felt for, for the defender because uh, yeah holland converts in a game back where especially in the first half he made this impression yes i'm back from injury but please don't take me off i'm really working out i'm fit i can do it um and then the game kind of fizzled out until burkhardt i mean it was a really bad uh kick or um a goal kick that over jason comes to burkhardt who makes it uh two to one and i think yeah maybe there is something happening However, Dortmund then played it routinely home and Mainz committed a lot of uh, men forward. Wide open in the 94th, uh, Bellingham plays it to Holland. I actually thought initially it was offside, but it was not. And 3-1 and uh, I was a deserved win. Frankfurt, just fresh off a win over Bayern. Cannot confirm it. Uh, Hertha Berlin had a one lead through, through Richter in the 7th and then uh, Eckelenberg, um, who just had come on. Eckelenkamp who had just come, come, come on, makes it 2-0 in, in, right in the face where Frankfurt really said, I mean, it was a horrible first half, but the Frankfurt came out, uh, showed, showed some punch and yeah, some, some aggression and right into the Eckling camp, makes it 2-0. At the halftime, I mean, Piontek missed two real sitters uh, where the game could have gone, swung very, very much towards um, uh, Hertha's uh, way. A penalty is all the Frankfurt could conjure up, and I think Hertha got a big win, and Frankfurt uh, is in trouble. Again, I say, we have a new coach, uh, uh, Freddy Bobic is now with Hertha, uh, the sporting director, so there's a lot of upheaval. You could keep some players, you lost some, some players. It is a tough ask, but you would expect more from, Frank from Frankfurt, as you would do from Hertha. Freiburg opened a new stadium with a very unlucky 1-1 against Leipzig. Um, Mainly because a the penalty that gave Leipzig the one 0 lead, I think was at best dubious. And then in the second half, Freiburg should have gotten. This was a stonewall penalty. How this is not given to me, I could not understand the way Hölle is gonna put down. Uh, Jung gives them the equalizer. I think they even hit the woodwork at one, one, one time. I really think that Fre Freiburg would have more than deserved this win. And again, Leipzig is also a team that just does not look right. The Jesse Marsh, Marsh method is not working. But it all pales into comparison. I mean, everything was geared up for the big clash. 2v1, Bayer against Bayern. Or as I said, Le Leverkusen again against Bayern. I, I rarely call them Bayer. Just because of the confusion Bayern and Bayern. Um, it was not much of a game. Uh, Lewandowski gave them uh, an early lead in the fourth minute. And then Bayern was actually wasteful with ch ch chances. But then within seven minutes, from the 30th to the 37th, Bayern scores four. Um, the second goal by Lewandowski, a real nice back heel. Uh, Müller, Süle takes a shot. Müller, uh, basically with the inside of his upper thigh, um, Puts it in the net and then right off the kick of the. They again get the ball. Müller to Gnabry, third to third fifth, and then Goretzka to Gnabry, in the 37th. Leverkusen, yes, Bayern were brilliant and it had all the signs of Brazil, Germany in many ways. However, um, as brilliant as Bayern were, if you don't defend and if you don't stand close to Le uh, to uh, to the Bayern uh, players and you don't give them a little bit more physicality or resistance, you are gonna be rolled over. Bayern then took uh, the <laughs> pedal of the medal 
And Shrik actually could get a goal back, but this was a true statement of power. I said it before, it is really hard to see anyone else but Bayern winning uh, this one. And I think Bayern just took the gas, a foot of the gas in the sense that, you know, you have the Champions League. We've won this game. Uh, we can now ease it off and see wherever, wherever it goes. I mean, bravo Bayern uh, and Leverkusen again. Uh, last season when they lost at home to Bayern, this was kind of before the winter break and this was kind of this make or break. If Leverkusen wins this one, we will have a title race other than the Bayern goes off. And I have a feeling this is very, very much uh, sim uh, s similar. Um, the interesting part is that it was such a domination that uh, Bayern is anyway so much ahead of the league. I, I want to say that Bayern actually is only if the, f the team with the fourth biggest change in the expected standings in terms of absolute points gained through this win. Hertha actually had a big one, but uh, at this very, very moment, Bayern 92% champions, and I think it's only going to get worse. With the defensive frailties that Dortmund have, I literally don't see Bayern uh, not winning this title, to be honest. The other interesting part is that next week, um, you know, the two teams that lost big were Köln and Leverkusen against Hoffenheim and Bayern. Bayern play Hoffenheim at home and Köln in the, uh, yeah, you want to say Cologne derby, Rhine derby, Köln Leverkusen is also playing, so doesn't look very fun. That was it for me for this week's Bundesliga uh, action, as I said, show of force, absolutely show of force from Bayern Munich. That's the big takeaway from this one. In any case, let me know what you thought about what's happening in these two leagues, uh, whether you saw anything, um, anything at, drop a line below, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might actually enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel, and also hit the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day.